Hi friends, today let us discuss about the seventh cranial nerve that is the facial nerve. So coming to the introduction, facial nerve is the seventh cranial nerve. It is the both sensory and motor nerve. The main function is it controls the muscles of facial expression. Now coming to the location and force of facial nerve. Now coming to the location of facial nucleus. So facial nerve comprises of three nuclei. That, that is first one it is the motor nuclei. Motor nuclei. Motor nuclei. This is the facial motor nuclei which is situated in the lower part of the pons. So this is it is the midbrain, pons and medulla oblongata. The facial motor nucleus is situated in the lower part of the pons. Next coming to the parasympathetic nuclei. Facial motor nuclei. Next coming to the parasympathetic nuclei. Parasympathetic nuclei comprises of superior salivary and lacrimal nuclei. This parasympathetic fibers, the fibers arises from the paras, uh, parasympathetic nuclei that is the superior salivary and lacrimal nuclei which is the parasympathetic nuclei superior salivary and lacrimal nuclei this superior salivary and lacrimal nuclei is also situated in the lower part of the pons and it is situated posterior lateral to the facial motor nuclei the superior salivary and lacrimal nuclei is also situated in the lower part of the pons but in the posterior lateral to the motor nuclei, facial motor nuclei. Next coming to the tractus solitarius nuclei. Tractus solitarius nucleus is the sensory nerve. There are two sensory nuclei that is the spinal nucleus of trigeminal nerve and the tractus solitarius nuclei. This tractus solitarius nuclei, tractus solitarius it is situated in the medulla oblongata. Next comes the sensory nuclei that is the spinal nucleus of trigeminal nerve which is situated in the medulla oblongata and also in the upper part of the spinal cord. This is the spinal nucleus of, spinal nucleus of trigeminal nerve. So there are totally three nuclei that is the motor nuclei, parasympathetic nuclei and both sensory nuclei. Motor nuclei which is the proper facial motor nuclei. Next comes the parasympathetic nuclei that is the superior salivary and lacrimal nucleus which is situated in the lower part of the pons. Posterior lateral to the motor nuclei and sensory nucleus, two sensory nucleus that is the tractus solitaris which is situated in the medulla oblongata and the spinal nucleus of trigeminal nerve which is situated in the medulla oblongata and also the upper part of the pons. Next coming to the course of facial nerve in the cranial cavity. First about the motor nerve. This motor nerve that which run posteriorly that which run posteriorly and it winds around the around the abducens nerve nucleus so here comes the abducens nerve nucleus this facial nerve motor facial nerve that which winds around the abducens nerve and it forms a elevation it forms an elevation in the floor of the fourth ventricle so here is this is the floor of floor of fourth ventricle so while winding around the abducens nerve nuclei it forms a elevation in the floor of the fourth ventricle and this elevation is known as the facial colliculus the facial nerve 
while winding around the abducens nerve abducens nerve nucleus it forms an elevation in the floor of the fourth ventricle and this elevation is known as the facial colliculus and this motor nerve after winding around the abducens nerve nuclei it comes out of the brain stem through a through the pondo medullary junction pons and medulla uh, medulla oblongata so here comes the pondo medullary junction in and it comes out of the pondo medullary out of the brain stem through the pondo medullary junction this facial nerve comes out of the uh, brain stem through the pondo medullary junction lateral to the abducens nerve so in this diagram here comes the abducens nerve this facial nerve comes lateral to the so medially there is the abducens nerve the facial nerve comes comes out of the brain stem in the pondo medullary this is the pons and this is the medulla oblongata this is the pondo medullary junction in the pondo medullary junction the facial nerve comes out of the brain stem through the which lateral part of the laterally to the abducens nerve next the parasympathetic nerve from the superior salivary and lacrimal nuclei also comes out of the brain stem through the pondo medullary junction the sensory nerve from the tractus solitarius and the spinal nucleus of trigeminal nerve also comes out of the brain stem through the pondo medullary junction after coming out of the brain stem the facial nerve is divided into two division that is the motor nerve along along is known as the facial nerve facial nerve proper and this parasympathetic nerve and the sensory nerve that is the nerve from the tractus solitarius and the now from this spinal nucleus of trigeminal nerve these three together known as the these together known as the nervous intermedius nervous intermedius so after coming out of the brain stem the facial nerve is divided into two division that is the first one first division is the facial nerve proper the motor nerve alone is known as the facial nerve proper and the nerve fibers from the parasympathetic nerve and the sensory nerve that is parasympathetic nucleus and the sensory nucleus that is the from the sensory uh, sensory fibers from the tractus solitarius and the spinal nucleus of trigeminal nerve the sensory fibers and the parasympathetic fibers together known as the nervous intermedius now coming to the motor nerve facial nerve proper course of the motor nerve after coming out of the brain stem after coming out of the brain stem it exits out of the cranial cavity through a meatus through a meatus known as the internal auditory meatus or internal acoustic meatus internal auditory or acoustic meatus it comes of the comes out of the cranial cavity through the internal acoustic meatus and then it enter into the canal which is known as the facial canal so this is the this canal is known as the facial facial canal it is the bony canal which is situated in the pectoral part of the temporal bone in the middle ear 
so in the facial canal there are three segments that is this is the labyrinthine segment here comes the tympanic segment next comes the mastoid segment so facial canal is situated in the middle layer in the petrous part of the temporal bone the facial canal consists of three segment that is the labyrinthine segment tympanic segment and mastoid segment between the labyrinthine segment and the tympanic segment there is a curve there is a curve or a bend which is known as the genu and this bend is known as the genu in which there is a ganglion in the genu this is known as the geniculate ganglion this ganglion is known as the geniculate ganglion so this motor nerve the facial motor nerve that which comes out of the cranial cavity through the internal acoustic meatus or internal auditory meatus and enter into the middle ear through the facial canal and run through the facial canal and here it is the genital ganglion this motor nerve that which do not rely on the motor on the genital ganglion and it runs through the facial canal facial canal and it while running downward through the facial canal it give to a it give rise to a branch to a muscle known as tapedius muscle this tapedius muscle is attached to the bone which is known as the stapes bone this is tapedius muscle helps to stabilize the stapes bone and also it helps to control the excessive movement of the excessive movement in response to the loud sounds so this stapedius muscle this is the stapedius muscle stapedius muscle is attached to the stapes bone this the function of the stapedius muscle is it stabilizes the stapes bone and also it controls the excessive movement excessive movement in response to the loud sound so the motor nerve that which supplies the stapedius muscle and this nerve is known as the nerve to stapedius nerve to stapedius and the motor nerve comes out of the cranial comes out of the facial canal through a foramen known as tylomastoid foramen and this foramen this foramen is known as the stylo stylomastoid foramen so the motor nerve the motor nerve comes out of the cranial cavity through the internal acoustic meatus and enter into the facial canal then there is a ganglion which is known as the genital ganglion and the motor nerve that which do not rely on the genital ganglion and runs through the facial canal and while coming and while running down through the facial canal it gives rise to a branch to the muscle which is known as the stapedius muscle and this nerve is known as the nerve to stapedius muscle nerve to stapedius and then the nerve comes out of the facial canal through a foramen known as stylomastoid foramen after coming out of the stylomastoid foramen it gives rise to two branches that is the first branch to two muscle
that means due rest to two muscle branches to two muscle the muscle is knee posterior belly of digastric muscle so this is the posterior belly of digastric muscle posterior belly of digastric digastric muscle and also it gives rise to stylo hyoid muscle stylo hyoid muscle so after coming out of the stylo mastoid foramen the facial nerve run downward and it supply the two muscle that is the stylo hyoid muscle and the posterior belly of digastric muscle which is present in the neck region one branch that which move downward and uh, supply the two muscles and the other branch that which goes to the parotid gland and it is divided into five branches temporal zygomatic buccal marginal mandibular and cervical so after coming out of the sternal mastoid foramen it is divided into two branches one branch that which move downwards and the other branch that which goes to the parotid gland and then it is divided into five branches that is the temporal branch temporal branch that which supplies the muscles in the forehead next comes the zygomatic branch this is the temporal this is the temporal branch then comes the zygomatic zygomatic then buccal marginal mandibular and cervical so this is the parotid gland and then it is divided into five branches temporal branch for the forehead then zygomatic branch for the orbital region buccal branch for the buccal area marginal mandibular branch for the marginal mandibular area and cervical branch for the cervical area temporal branch supplies the muscles in the forehead that is the frontalis orbicularis oculi corrugator supercilia zygomatic branch supplies the orbicularis oculi buccal branch supplies the buccinator zygomaticus orbicularis oculi muscle marginal branch marginal mandibular branch supplies the mandibular muscle and cervical branch supplies the platysma in the cervical region so that's about the motor nerve of the facial nerve motor branch of facial nerve next comes the parasympathetic nerve fibers parasympathetic nerve fibers from the superior salivary and lacrimal nuclei so the parasympathetic nerve fibers also exit from the brain stem and it exit from the cranial cavity through the internal auditory meatus or internal acoustic meatus it, it exits from the cranial cavity and the nerve the nerve fibers from the superior salivary nuclei it go downward and enter into the facial canal the nerve fibers from the lacrimal nuclei it run upward it do not enter into the facial canal but it run upward and the nerve fibers that which run upward from the lacrimal nucleus this is the parasympathetic nerve fibers from the lacrimal nucleus the parasympathetic nerve fibers from the lacrimal nucleus run upward and that which do not enter into the facial nuclei the parasympathetic nerve fibers from the superior salivary nuclei run downward and enter into the facial nuclei the nerve that which run parasympathetic nerve that which run upward it is known as the greater petrosal nerve so it is the lacrimal parasympathetic nerve fibers and parasympathetic nerve fibers from the lacrimal nuclei it run upward again this greater petrosal nerve enter into the middle cranial cavity through a small opening or hiatus which is known as the hiatus for greater petrosal nerve hiatus for greater petrosal nerve 
after entering into the cranial cavity the greater pectoral cell now run forward and again it exit from the cranial cavity through a foramen known as foramen lacerum this is the foramen which is known as the foramen lacerum in the foramen lacerum there is an artery that which passes through the foramen lacerum which is known as the internal carotid artery so this is the internal carotid artery in the internal carotid artery there is there are plexus of nerves that which surrounds the internal carotid artery there are plexus of nerves that which surrounds the internal carotid artery from this plexus of nerves it gives rise to a sympathetic fibers sympathetic fibers and this sympathetic fibers is known as the deep petrosal deep petrosal nerve so this is the greater petrosal nerve is the parasympathetic nerve fiber and the deep petrosal nerve is the sympathetic nerve fiber so the uh, greater petrosal nerve and the deep petrosal nerve enter into a canal known as pterygoid canal the deep petrosal nerve and the greater petrosal nerve enter into a canal known as pterygoid canal inside the pterygoid canal inside the pterygoid canal the deep petrosal nerve and the parasympathetic nerve deep petrosal nerve and the uh, greater petrosal nerve together known as the together known as the median nerve so greater petrosal nerve and the deep petrosal nerve that which runs through a canal known as pterygoid canal inside that canal they both the nerve together known as the median nerve and then it enter into a fossa known as the pterygopalatine fossa and this fossa is known as the pterygo palatine fossa inside the pterygo palatine fossa there is a ganglion known as the pterygo palatine ganglion so this is the pterygo pterygo palatine ganglion here the greater petrosal nerve enter into the pterygo palatine fossa and it rely on the pterygo palatine ganglion then it enter into the orbit through a fissure known as inferior orbital fissure so this is a fissure known as the inferior orbital fissure it enter into the orbit through the inferior orbital fissure and innervates the lacrimal gland so this is the lacrimal gland it also innervates the so here comes the nasa it also innervates the nasa gland palatin gland and here comes the pharynx it innervates the pharyngeal mucosal gland nasal gland palatin gland and pharyngeal mucosal gland 
also the greater petrocell nerve after entering into the pterygopalatine fossa it lay on a ganglion which is known as the pterygopalatine ganglion and then the nerve enter into the orbit which is through a fissure known as inferior orbital fissure and it innervates the lacrimal gland it also innervates the nasal gland palatine gland and the pharyngeal mucosal gland this deep petrocell nerve enter into the pterygopalatine fossa that which do not rely on the pterygopalatine ganglion and then it enter into the orbit through the inferior orbital fissure and innervates the lacrimal gland and also it innervates the nasal gland, palatine gland and pharyngeal mucus gland. So that's about the nerve fibers, parasympathetic nerve fibers from the lacrimal nuclei. Next comes the parasympathetic nerve fibers from the superior salivary nucleus. The superior salivary, the parasympathetic nerve from the superior salivary nucleus enter into the facial canal and that which do not rely on the genuclate ganglion and it run downward it run through the facial canal and then it enter into a canaliculi which is present in the posterior wall of the middle ear so this is the posterior wall this is the posterior wall and this is the anterior wall so here comes the this is the medial wall in front it will comes the lateral wall here the posterior wall and here the anterior wall so the nerve fibers from the parasympathetic nerve fibers from the superior salivary nucleus while passing through the facial canal it enter into a canaliculi which is present in the posterior wall of middle ear and then it run forward and then comes out of the middle middle ear through a canaliculi which is present in the anterior wall which is known as the anterior canaliculi so this is the posterior canaliculi posterior canaliculi and this is the anterior canalicular so this parasympathetic nerve from the superior salivary nucleus it enter into a canalicular which is present in the posterior wall of the middle ear which is known as the posterior canalicular and then it run forward and it comes out of the cranial out of the middle ear through a canalicular which is present in the anterior wall of the middle ear and then it enter into a enter into a fissure known as pterygotympanic fissure so this is the pterygotympanic fissure after coming out of the middle ear, middle ear through the anterior canalicula it enter into a fissure known as pterygotympanic fissure and then it joins along with the lingual nerve it joins along with the lingual nerve lingual nerve that which supplies the anterior two-third of the eye anterior two-third of the tongue sorry anterior two-third so after coming out of the pterygotympanic fissure it run along with the lingual nerve this is the lingual nerve lingual nerve it is the branch of the uh, trigeminal nerve that which supplies the anterior two third of the tongue the parasympathetic nerve fibers after existing out from the pterygotympanic fissure it rely on a ganglion which is known as the submandibular ganglion after relying in the submandibular ganglion it innervates the submandibular gland and the sublingual gland so this is the 
sub mandibular gland sub mandibular gland and here comes the sub lingual gland so the parasympathetic the parasympathetic nerve fibers from the uh, superior salivary nucleus it run into the facial canal and then it run downwards in the posterior wall of the middle ear there is a canalicula which is known as the posterior canalicula if the nerve fibers parasympathetic nerve fibers enter into the posterior canalicula and then it run for, forward and then it comes out of the middle ear through a canalicula known as the anterior canalicula which is present in the anterior wall of middle ear and then it enter into a fissure known as the pterygotympanic fissure and then it run along with the lingual nerve lingual nerve, lingual nerve that we supplies the anterior two third of the tongue the parasympathetic nerve fibers that which rely on a ganglion known as the submandibular ganglion and then it innervates the two ganglion two gland which is known as the submandibular gland and the sublingual gland now comes the sensory fibers sensory fibers from the tractus solitarius the sensory fibers from the tractus solitarius especially for the taste, taste sensation from the anterior two third of the tongue so the sensory fibers from the tractus solitarius also comes out of the cranial cavity through the internal acoustic meatus or internal auditory meatus and then it enter into the middle ear through the facial canalicula that which do not rely on the genital ganglion and then which run downward through the facial canalicula and this sensory nerve fibers also enter into the canalicula which is known as the posterior canalicula which is present in the posterior wall of the middle ear and then run forward forward and comes out of the middle ear through the canalicula which is present in the anterior wall which is known as the anterior canalicula and also it enter into a fissure known as pterygotympanic fissure so here so here this sensory fibers that is the sensory fibers from the tractus solitarius and the parasympathetic fibers from the superior salivary nucleus these together known as the corda tympani corda tympani this together known as the corda tympani after coming out of the pterygo tympanic fissure the sensory fibers from the tractus solitarius supplies the anterior two third of the tongue so that's about the sensory fibers from the tractus solitarius then come come the sensory fibers from the spinal nucleus of trigeminal nerve the sensory fibers from the spinal nucleus of trigeminal nerve it exit from the cranial cavity through the internal acoustic meatus and then it enter into the facial canal and then it turn downward and comes out of the facial canal through the stylomaster foramen after coming out of the facial canal through the stylomaster foramen the sensory nerve from the spinal nucleus of trigeminal nerve is known as the posterior auricular nerve posterior auricular nerve 
this posterior molecular now that which supply the posterior part muscles in the posterior part of the auricle so that's about the nerve fibers location and course of facial nerve so coming to the location of facial nerve nucleus there is a motor nerve nucleus which is present in the lower part of the pons and there is a parasympathetic nerve nucleus that is a superior salivary and lacrimal nucleus which is present in the lower part of the pons posterior lateral to the um, motor nerve nucleus motor nerve motor facial nerve then comes the tractus solitarius which is present in the medulla oblongata spinal nerve spinal nucleus of trigeminal nerve it is situated in the medulla oblongata and also the upper part of the spinal cord the motor nerve the motor nerve from the motor nerve nucleus that which runs backward and then it winds around the abducens nerve while winding around the abducens nerve there forms an elevation in the core of the fourth ventricle and this elevation is known as the facial colliculus after winding around it enters and it exits from the brain stem through the pondomedullary junction lateral to the abducens nerve the facial nerve is divided into two division that is the facial nerve proper facial nerve proper is the motor nerve from the motor nucleus and this nerve fibers that is the parasympathetic nerve fibers and the sensory nerve fibers from the tractus solitarius and spinal nucleus of trigeminal nerve all together known as the nervus intermedius first about the motor nerve motor nerve first about the motor nerve the motor nerve after exiting from the brain stem it enter into the middle ear through the meatus known as the internal auditory meatus or internal acoustic meatus it enter into the middle ear and then it run through the canal known as the facial canal there is a ganglion in the facial canal which is known as a geniculate ganglion it do not rely on the geniculate ganglion and then it run through the facial canal and then it run downward while running downward it give a uh, give rise to a branch which is known as the nerve to stapedius to the muscle which is known as the stapedius muscle and then it comes out of the facial canal through a foramen known as the stylomastoid foramen after coming out it give rise to two branches the one branch that which run downwards and give rise to, and supplies the stylohyoid muscle and posterior belly of digastric muscle which is known as the stylohyoid nerve and the posterior belly of digastric nerve and the other nerve that which enter into the parotid gland and then it divided into five branches that is the temporal zygomatic buccal ma marginal mandibular and cervical branch next coming to the parasympathetic nerve fibers from the superior salivary and lacrimal nuclei the parasympathetic nerve fibers comes out of the brain stem comes out of the cranial cavity through the internal auditory meatus and then the parasympathetic nerve fibers from the lacrimal nuclei goes upward run upward and the parasympathetic nerve fibers from the superior salivary nuclei run downward into the facial canal the nerve that which parasympathetic nerve that which run upward from the facial canal it is known as the greater petrosal nerve the greater petrosal nerve run upward and then it enter into the middle cranial cavity through a hiatus known as the greater petrosal nerve hiatus of greater petrosal nerve and then after entering into the middle cra middle cranial cavity it run down it run forward and then again it comes out of the cranial cavity through a through a foramen known as the foramen lacerum in the foramen lacerum there is a artery which is known as the internal carotid artery in the internal carotid artery there are plexus of nerves that which surrounds the internal carotid artery from the plexus of nerves there is a sympathetic nerve fibers that which run out of the internal carotid artery and this sympathetic nerve is known as the deep petrosal nerve the deep petrosal nerve and the greater petrosal nerve go on both enter into the canal known as the pterygoid canal inside the pterygoid canal the both the nerve that is the greater petrosal nerve and the deep petrosal nerve together known as the median nerve after after entering into the canal it goes to the 
foramen it goes to the foramen known as pterygopalatine foramen in the pterygopalatine foramen there is a ganglion known as pterygopalatine ganglion here the greater petrocell now rely on the pterygopalatine ganglion and then it goes to the orbit through a fissure known as inferior orbital fissure and then it innervates the lacrimal gland and it also innervates the nasal gland, palatine gland, pharyngeal mucosal gland. The deep petrocell now that which do not rely on the pterygopalatine ganglion and then it runs upward and enter into the orbit through a inferior orbital fissure and it innervates the lacrimal gland and it also innervates the nasal gland, palatine gland, pharyngeal mucosal gland. Now coming to the parasympathetic nerve fibers from the superior salivary nuclei. The, superior, uh, the parasympathetic nerve fibers from the superior salivary nucleus runs through the facial canal and then it enters into a canalicule which is present in the posterior wall of middle ear which is known as the posterior canalicule. It enters into the post posterior canalicule and then it runs forward and then it comes out of the middle ear through a canalicule which is present in the anterior wall which is known as the anterior canalicule and then it enter into a fissure known as the pterygotympanic fissure after exiting from the pterygotympanic fissure it run along with the lingual nerve which is the branch of the trigeminal nerve and then it uh, and then it rely on a ganglion which is known as a submandibular ganglion and then it innervates the two gland which is known as submandibular ganglion and the sublingual gland. Now comes the sensory nucleus, sensory nerve fibers from the tractor solitaris. The sensory nerve fibers from the tractor solitaris also exit out from the brain, exit out from the cranial cavity through the internal auditory meatus and then it enter into the facial canal and then it enter into the canalicule which is present in the posterior wall which is known as the posterior canalicule it also run along with the sensory nerve fibers of uh, superior salivary nuclei and comes out of the middle ear through a canalicule which is present in the anterior wall which is known as the anterior canalicule and then it goes to a fissure known as the pterygotympanic fissure here this two nerve that is the sympathetic nerve and the parasympathetic nerve of uh, superior salivary nuclei and the sensory nucleus, sensory nerve of tractor solitaris, uh, these together known as the corda tympani. The tractor solitaris, the nerve from the sensory nerve from the tractor solitaris, it innervates the anterior two third of the tongue. Now comes the sensory nerve fibers from the spinal nucleus of trigeminal nerve. It comes out of the cranial cavity through the internal auditory meatus and it run through the facial canal and run and comes out of the facial canal through the stylomastoid foramen. After coming out of the facial canal through the stylomastoid foramen, the sensory nerve is known as posterior auricular, posterior auricular nerve. The posterior auricular nerve supplies the posterior part of the ear, that is the muscles in the posterior part of the ear. So that's about the location and force of the facial nerve. Thank you.